Hi everybody, thanks for watching. Today's going to be a useful do-it-yourself video. If you ever had a piece of old electronics that you stowed away but have forgotten to take out the batteries, there's a good chance that the batteries have leaked acid and you've got a mess on your electrodes on the back. For instance, this is a controller for a vintage Nordic Track ski machine. It was stowed with the batteries and I already took one battery out, but you can see the other battery in there, that white stuff on either end of the battery and even on the spring on the other side is covered with essentially battery acid. Now depending on when you catch this it is a treatable condition it can be cleaned and today I'm going to show you step by step how to do that and we'll also go over a little bit of the science of the processes going on. So I'm going to go over what you need. First since I'm on my wife's kitchen counter I'm going to use this Pyrex kind of tray to do my work here. You're going to need Q-tips, regular household white vinegar, regular household isopropyl alcohol, and I have an old toothbrush we use just for cleaning. Make sure you don't use this for people. And then, of course, just paper towels to help wipe up the mess. So the science going on with the battery here, this is probably going to be interesting to some, boring to others. Alkaline batteries, those are these things in the middle, right there. Those are the batteries that we use to power our clocks, TV remotes, flashlights, kids toys, you know, you know the sort of thing. They're made of a cathode, which is manganese dioxide, and an anode, which is zinc. These react to one another and produce electrons which with a, an electrolyte assistance, which is usually a potassium hydroxide, this powers your gadgets. When the alkaline battery is completely discharged, like this one has, this happens after a, long after they stop providing enough electricity for your device, uh, the potassium hydroxide breaks down. This process, once the potassium hydroxide breaks down inside the battery, it produces hydrogen gas, which builds up under pressure and eventually ruptures that battery. And once that steel casing is broken, the potassium hydroxide leaks out and sometimes over the circuitry in the device. So underneath this battery, you can see some circuitry. So these may not all be rescuable, but it's worth a try. It can take a lot of years for this to happen or just a few months. And that pretty much depends on the quality of the battery and how much parasitic draw these machines have on the batteries when they're not in use. So that's why you take the batteries out when you stow something for a long period of time. One other piece of trivia or science that's good to know, uh, you've seen a lot of videos where people will use baking soda to kind of neutralize the acid. Acid is what we call it. It's actually an alkaline base. So to clean up a base, we do need acid, a weak acid, and that's why we have this 5% white vinegar, the household type. To make this more simple to deal, to deal with, I'm just going to pour it into these little kitchen Pyrex bowls and that will just help me get a little closer to the action. Uh, we're going to use a Q-tip to, you know, Q-tip small enough to dip into here and then work on, the, work on those uh, pieces of white material. And we do that. Just like that, and right away the acid is going to start eating away at that base. And we just occasionally use a paper towel. Now this is actually frozen in there. So I'm gonna pry it up using the back of an old spoon. And you can see what a junky mess that is. Now this could be dangerous, caustic, harmful. So if you want, you can wear gloves or eyepieces. Eye but when this chemical gets in contact with the air, COT in the air, um, it becomes a lot less harmful. So I'm just gonna rinse my hands, but by all means wear gloves if you're more comfortable for that. Okay, so this is just a, a repeat process. We are going to take our Q-tip, dip it in the, uh, dip it in the uh, vinegar and rub it on. I'm also gonna do this not not on the spring side but the other side of the uh, battery compartment holder i think that's the positive side springs are usually the negative yep 
and if we get too much on it, we're going to dab it away with paper towels. But so I don't bore you, I'm going to let you listen to some cool band drum music while I do this fast forward or quick time. Okay, not too bad at all. You keep doing the dipping the uh, Q-tip into the vinegar and rubbing on there till all the evidence of that white uh, discharge is gone. And uh, once you're done with that, you'll let this thoroughly dry. And then, to make everything nice and tidy, we're going to use the same method with the isopropyl alcohol. I'll pour it into another one of these little containers. And using a Q-tip, I'll clean this. The isopropyl alcohol will clean any final little residue off and it will evaporate completely. So it'll get rid of any other debris in there and then we're going to have a brand new compartment. Here we are a few minutes later and we can see the battery compartment is very clean, very dry and I'm going to put some new batteries in and I'm hoping to see or at least hear a couple beeps. This is a machine that probably has to be hooked up to the uh, elect or to the wires in the machine to start giving me a readout but oh, 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 listen. Okay we have beeps. Yay! All right. So we are back in business. Once I'm hooking this into the machine, I'm sure I will see the appropriate readouts. But that's really quickly how you get rid of a mess that you've created inadvertently by leaving your batteries in for storage. Or maybe you've bought something that you really like and the previous owner has uh, left it in storage. So household chemicals, isopropyl alcohol, just regular white vinegar, paper towels, Q-tips and a little patience and you're good to go. Thanks for watching.